Let me tell you what we do. We are a company, a UK company, that develops humanoid robots for research and entertainment. What I brought here to DLD is a robot called, we call him Fonzie, because he's sexy, and he performs a, a very sexy dance. What's unique about this dance is that robots typically don't, are not able to dance. We made him dance by uh, analyzing videos of Beyonce and Michael Jackson and understanding how the composition of the dance was formed. And so we tracked the motion of, uh, of professional dancers and mimicked those motions in the robot. So what are the most important motions when, when dancing? Um, I, I don't know what the most important motions, but the interesting thing is uh, uh, there is something that is not so intuitive. When you dance, it doesn't really matter that your whole body is in sync with the music. It's enough that some part of your body is in sync with the music, while other, another part could be transitioning between motions. And so once we realized that, it was easier to form a, a, a dance that looked very human. So how hard, how hard was it to program this dance? It took about three weeks okay. uh, of trial and error. Uh, there was a lot of uh, a lot of attempts, and we used uh, some software that was customized to build uh, the robot dance. What were the hardest parts? Um, hardest parts were actually uh, the um, well transitions when he's on the floor, getting up to make sure that he doesn't overshoot and fall. And uh, actually, what happens with the robot? I'll show you an example. When he's standing, if he does, if he rotates his torso. Um, there is not enough friction with the floor. So what, what actually may rotate is actually the bottom half of the body rather than the top. So you have to deal with those kinds of issues uh, when programming a robot to dance. Okay. So how expensive is, is this robot? This robot is about 2,000 euros. And it's, um, yeah, we sell it usually. It's, it's used in a robotic fighting competition or football competition. In Asia, there's a, a popular competition called Robo One where robots fight each other in a sumo wrestling uh, battle. Uh, in Europe, there is a popular academic conference called Robo uh, Cup, where uh, teams of uh, academic teams of 10 or more uh, robots compete in a football match. So this is the kind of technology used in those robots. Okay. So are these the only projects you do, robots fighting and then dancing robots? No, actually we do robots for human-robot interaction, which is a, a very interesting field of research. So we work with universities and provide them with custom robots for uh, researching uh, how humans interact with robots. There's an emotional reaction. There is, um, if you want a robot to, for example, to conduct you, around a building or, uh, or give you help or assistance with the elderly, with uh, children with disabilities. Uh, robots are being researched how, to, how they would interact with people in, under these circumstances. What is the best way for a robot to interact with a person? <clears throat> um, the best way is, uh, well, he's capable of talking, of understanding speech, because this is standard. Every, every PC is able to understand speech. So the robot runs a PC, runs uh, like it has a computer and he can understand, so you can talk to him. And uh, nowadays they can even understand gestures thanks to uh, Kinect or a similar technology of depth. They can understand human gestures and implied uh, signals from people. That's another area of research.